I have everybody good? What an incredible collection of minds we have here today. I'm really impressed and feel very privileged. And I see an amazing opportunity at hand that I'd like to share. By combining the potential of new technology with the global reach of media and the intrinsic powers of music, story, and creativity, I believe together we can build an irrefutable force to redesign the future of humanity. And to illuminate that opportunity, I'm going to look through the lenses of music and story, or what we might refer to in today's context, the technologies of emotion. Let's take a look. I used to have a neighborhood just like you Used to chill with my homeboy just like you Some beautiful places I wish you could see A beautiful people, beautiful people Used to hang with my family just like you Brothers and sisters just like me Now all I have is my memories just like you A beautiful people, beautiful people Just like you من المسؤول صوماليا من المسؤول فلسطين من المسؤول عراق من المسؤول لبنان من المسؤول ايه من المسؤول اللي It's 2007 the US is deeply entangled in a mess in Iraq and I'm working on a music video with an brilliant Arab hip-hop artist named Whale. We've come together as part of a UN peace initiative <coughs> broadcasting videos and films throughout the Middle East. And our goal is to create empathy between one another by showing just how much alike we really are, especially as children, in our basic needs, in our dreams, and in the way we relate to our friends and family. We call the song, Just Like You. In the middle of recording, I learn about Pisintu, a children's choir in Portland, Maine, of all places, made up of teenage girls from 17 different countries. How amazing is that? I decide I have to record them for the video. After a day of travel, I arrive at the studio and I meet the girls. When I see that sparkle in each of their eyes, I realize why I'm here. But what moves me most is their stories. Stories of child refugees and orphans adopted from war-torn countries as far away as Somalia, Vietnam, Lebanon, and the Sudan. What I see before me is much more than a group of teenagers excited to meet this guy from Hollywood or to hear about tales of their favorite Disney stars. I see a microcosm of the world, a metaphor for the diversity of the human race, and a true validation of how music can unite and transform us. We're living in a time of unprecedented flux, escalating populations, and increasing levels of disruptive stress. We're also living in time of exponential advances in science and technology, which many people tell me are the keys to solving the world's problems. While technology can provide humanity with better solutions and amazing opportunities, technology alone cannot address the psychological, emotional, and cultural complexities of human beings. Without the insights to better understand one another and to adapt to change, we will continue to react out of fear and eventually shut down. We have to develop holistic solutions and create more empathy between one another. We have to provide our children with the tools and resources to be more creative, to adapt more quickly, and to stay more connected and more balanced in the face of challenge, even if just to survive the traffic in Sao Paulo when there's 10 billion people on the planet. <laughs> You've all seen it. <laughs> As I'm preparing for my talk today, my friend John asked me, why do you care so much about the children? And I really had to think about this. It's because I was trying to emulate my father, a pediatrician in the city of Detroit who gave his whole life to helping children, or because each time I look in their eyes, I see a little piece of me that got lost along the way. Imagine Detroit in the 60s. 
the birthplace of the automobile, the poster child of the Industrial Revolution, and the home of Motown Records. We're pumping out new cars and new sounds, and the whole world is along for the ride. At the age of six, I cut my first 45 from the back of a Captain Crunch cereal box. It's Michael Jackson. And I'm forever hooked on music. Flash forward a few years, and I'm in junior high school and living in a very different Detroit. Racial tension, corrupt government, and the fall of the auto empire have completely decimated the city. My school shuts down, my favorite corner store is boarded up, and my best friend Joey is addicted to heroin. I'm lying in the dark on my parents' living room floor, and I'm listening to Marvin Gaye in my headphones belting, what's going on? You remember that song? And I'm trying to make sense of the world around me. Motown, that vibrant memory of my life as a young child, had become a metaphor for the fall of the industrial era and the shattered mirror of my teenage experience, with a reputation as murder capital of the world. And the music, well, if it wasn't for the music, I wouldn't be here today. Music gave me a place to seek refuge from the noise outside and to dream. And I dreamed big. I dreamed of making music one day that could give hope and inspiration to people all over the world, just like you. Is there anybody in this room today who can honestly say you've never been inspired or deeply moved by a piece of music? No hands. Think of all the times that music's been there for you like a good friend, to celebrate a great occasion or to bring the medicine for a broken heart. Music transforms our lives into deeply resonating human experiences. And it's not just nostalgia. It's documented science and an integral part of the evolution of our planet. Outside my bedroom, there's a tree. And every morning just before sunrise, there's a roar of birds, the same time every day. Do you ever wonder why birds sing? Inventor Dan Carlson says that birds sing to help plants grow. Really, it's true. In his desire to help eradicate hunger in the world, Dr. Carlson experimented with ways to increase the output of plants on farms, or produce on farms. He tested the impact of several kinds of music on plant growth and discovered that his best results came from sounds similar to the singing of a chorus of birds. This, I don't know about you, but this blew my mind when I first heard it. The well-being of the earth and the natural cycle of life depended upon bird song? How does this work? Well, the leaves of plants have sensitive pores called stomata, which open up to take in moisture and nutrients, especially rich during the early morning dew. So you might say that birds sing at dawn like a kind of musical alarm clock to dilate the stomata, give the plants a healthier breakfast, and help them have a more productive day. If music has this effect on plants, imagine the effect it has on our own bodies. Like those plants, each one of us is vibrating at the cellular level. And the quality of those vibrations and the highly complex systems that they control, our emotions, our thoughts, and even our physical well-being can be significantly affected and shaped by music. Listening to the right music can improve concentration, enhance memory, stimulate creativity, and aid in the cognitive development of your child. The New England Journal of Medicine says that even dancing is more effective at rewiring our neural pathways than playing golf, doing crossword puzzles, or even reading books. And playing music, well, playing music activates more areas of the human brain than any other known activity. Music also has the unique ability to bypass our thinking brain and alter our perceptions without us even knowing it. Our limbic system, it's one of the oldest parts of the human brain, but it's still the part from which we instinctually react and make many of our most important decisions. Go figure. Through a process I call musical alchemy, using sound vibration to change the chemical balance of the listener's brain, our limbic system can be directly informed and programmed by music. Music we like increases the level of dopamine, just like food or sex, so that's pretty cool. But what's exciting to me is that music can increase the level of serotonin. And serotonin is associated with higher order thinking processes and goal-directed behaviors. So think of it this way. If dopamine creates immediate pleasure, serotonin can create balance
by reinforcing values, empathy, and feelings of personal fulfillment. Beyond its effect on individuals, music can change the perception of entire cultures. If we're going to talk about creating a better future for our children, however, we need to rethink education. A pretty smart guy named Plato once said, I would teach children music, physics, and philosophy. But most importantly, music, for in the patterns of music and all the arts are the keys of learning. So I want to bring your attention to what I believe is one of the most important reasons for learning music, creativity. Creativity will be an essential tool for the next generation to solve challenges and adapt to unforeseen change. And creativity is not just the domain of artists. A child's creative development can be directly correlated to the future success in all kinds of careers, including science, medicine, and yes, even technology. And what about the future of government? Well, a recent IBM poll of 1,500 CEOs identified creativity as the number one leadership competency of the future. So based on Plato's advice and the undeniable impact of music on the human brain, it should be a no-brainer to insist that music and creativity are part of every child's education. It's 1986, and I'm in the creative center of America, Hollywood. I'm working for one of the top record producers, and I'm taking all the steps to become a successful producer myself, to fulfill that dream I had as a teenager, and I'm just, I'm on top of the world. And then, suddenly the bottom falls out. I develop chronic back pain from scoliosis. I lose my job. I lose my apartment. And I'm facing a pile of debt from college loans. I'm on the brink of physical and mental collapse. And at my lowest point, I have an epiphany. I'm sitting in a dark theater watching Oliver Stone's Platoon. And I'm blown away by George Delarue's score behind this vivid personification and those unforgettable images of that horrible Vietnam War. And throughout the movie, I'm obsessed with just one thought. As deeply as I can affect people through music, imagine how I can impact the world by combining the power of music and film. And I finally understand why one of the most addictive and perception-altering drugs in the world is television. I go to work for George Delarue himself, one of the great masters of cinema, and I learn firsthand how to shift consciousness through the music and stories. But are you aware of just how much music can alter our perception of what we think we see? To demonstrate, I'm going to show you the same short, zip, zip, that's a hard one, same short scene from a movie three times. And each time I'm going to change one thing, the music. And for each clip, I want you to ask yourself, about the main character. Who is this guy? Where is he going? And what is he up to?
Music literally changes the narration in our mind and redefines how we see the world. And people are innately drawn to music. Did you know that 9 out of 10 of the top viewed videos on YouTube are music videos? And the number one rated show in America seven years in a row, American Idol, a music show. And one of the most popular video games, Guitar Hero, and I know you play. <laughs> music is the emotional glue holding the world together. And by combining the right music with engaging stories and compelling images, we can transform the feelings and perceptions of millions of people in a matter of seconds. It's now 2011, and I'm working on a documentary about my hometown, Detroit, when one of the city's most beloved pediatricians, my father, passes away. I dedicate the film in his name, and I make a promise to carry his healing intentions out into the world on a massive scale to combine the powerful modalities of music, story, and creativity in film with the wealth of resources available in the world today. Amazing technology, global media, and intelligent and caring people just like you. So how can you and I work together to help the future generations become more creative, intelligent, and compassionate human beings to better adapt to change and stress? We need technology, and we need the collective knowledge and experience that's in this room. But we need to be aware, because the technologies of emotion are quite powerful weapons, especially in the wrong hands. And the forces of greed and deception are highly skilled at the use of technology and media. As agents of change, all of us, we need to ensure that these tools are used for the good of our children. We need to transform the way we think and relate as a species. And now the good news, <laughs> that together we can do it. We can do it on a scale more massive than we ever could in the history of mankind. We have the means today to reach and impact over a billion people and to do it quickly. We have huge networks throughout the world and people almost everywhere are connected to them. Across the globe, people are spending countless hours watching television, listening to music, surfing the net, going to movies, and sharing their favorite content across huge social networks. And technology is helping by changing the how and the where we listen to, watch, create, and share music, stories, and ideas. In China alone, the government is building thousands of portable movie theaters to take programming out to the 800 million citizens living outside of the urban centers. And technology has created a whole new evolution of storytelling that's interactive allowing us to more deeply engage the audience and inviting them for the first time to participate in the storytelling process. And why is this so important? Because he who controls the story controls the future of humanity. So whether through a film like Avatar, a hit TV show, the theater in your pocket, the technology in your hand, or a YouTube clip that changes history, we can redesign the way we see the world. And what a chance we have right here. Brazil is about to host two of the world's largest media events, the Olympics and the World Cup. But I need your help. When we leave this room today, people will still argue with me and tell me that communication, empathy, music, and creativity are soft subjects and that we're living in hard times. While I would never deny the significance of critical issues like health care or world hunger, I will offer this thought. One good meal can feed a man for a day, but one great story or one great song can impact a million souls for a lifetime. So what do you say? Let's work together by combining the potential of technology with the intrinsic powers of music and the global impact of media. We can take control of the story and rewrite the future of humanity.